where we're at. You believe that you can communicate with animals. We get told that by animal communi communicators everywhere. Everyone can do it. It's, you know, within us, it's your ability. So at some level, we do accept that. We believe that we can. Here comes the but. But you're not getting the result though it can be that you're not getting the results consistently or that you're not getting the results in a way that you would like. So let's look at what creates the doubt when you don't get results. So doubt comes in many different forms. You know, it can be very different for each of us, but there's actually a common thread. Um, I've run a lot of surveys and I've done a lot of teaching and I've done many, many one-to-ones to start to collate what are the very kind of common thread that we all share. So it's important to know that you're not alone. So doubt can come in the form of saying things like, well, I can't be sure if my pet can hear me or receive what I'm sending them. Or the doubt can set in because even though you've been communicating about the problems and the issues with your pets, it's still not resolved. It can be like you get nothing, you know, I've had it described where it's like hitting the wall. You come to a point where you think nothing's happening. I don't know what else or how else to move forward with it. And for some of us, you can get some visuals, you might get some sensations, you might get some emotions, but you're wondering where the conversation is because ultimately animal communication is about having a conversation with our animals. And also you start to maybe look at other people and you think, I don't experience it like I see how they do it. And you say to yourself, I know it, I know it's real. I know it happens because when I don't think about it, when I'm not consciously wanting to communicate with my pet, I get information just out of the blue, almost like I didn't ask for it, or I was just sitting there, you know, and then the information came to me. So you start to doubt whether it's something that you can do when you want it to. And you might not feel or see anything when you ask to connect. And you think, well, am I supposed to? I really need to know. So if I can see something or feel something, that would really help. Or you may not know, you know, what or how to ask the questions. It's almost like, okay, I want to ask my dog you know whether he likes the walk that I take him but I don't really know how to ask it or whether that's the right way to ask it so doubt is just one word but actually all these thoughts kind of start swimming around us and that's what is creating the doubt let's look at the results that you may want um, for example you want to have the evidence that the information is actually from your pet. That's a biggie. So I'm almost like, well, how do I know? How do I know it's from them? Being able to hear your pets clearly. You might say to yourself, I think that's what they are telling me, but we say it with such kind of hesitancy. So the results you want is to just know you can hear your pets clearly. You want to resolve problems because animal communication ultimately is really one practice that can be very, very effective in resolving problems. We can really get to the root cause of the problems. You wanna get answers back. If you ask a question, you'd love to know, you wanna hear from them. You also want to have flowing conversations, you know, because ultimately that's really just the pleasure of it, the enjoyment of it. You know, you say something, your pet answers you back, you say something else, your pet says something else. That would just be the result that you would love and the confidence that you're doing it right, so that you're not forever thinking, am I doing it right? Is this how it is? Or, you know, because all of that really um, gives you the, the, again, the enjoyment and confidence also means, means you wanna do it, means you're not avoiding communicating with your pets. And the results you want is actually staying focused as well. Um, knowing that when you have a conversation or a communication, it feels really clear, you know the direction it's going, and you're not kind of lost in maybe receiving 
information that you're not quite uh, you know, understanding whether it's relevant or not. And also knowing the questions to ask, um, just being so excited about, wow, I can ask them this, or, oh, wow, yeah, I'd love to know this about them. So hopefully you're already able to relate to the doubts, some of the doubts and some of the results that you want. So doubt, it's kind of got a bad rep. It's almost like we shouldn't doubt, you know, doubt's a bad thing. It's almost like, oh God, you know, I just don't, I just don't know what I'm doing. And it's almost has that energy around it. But what I've come to realize is that doubt is inevitable. It's just, it's just part of, part of our brain, how our minds work. So if we try to almost like eliminate doubt. If you try and say something like, well, you know, I want to do animal communication without doubt. I want to be able to communicate with my pets and not have any doubts. It's almost setting yourself up for, for failure because I want you to know doubt is inevitable in any circumstances, anything we want to try. So how about if we really look at doubt in a different way? Because we know or I'm experiencing in my life that doubt is inevitable. So I accept it. it's like, okay, doubt's going to happen. But what, what I do with doubt is really the key. So it depends on whether you use doubt as a roadblock or a road sign. Now, let's think about it that way. What does a roadblock do or how do we react towards a roadblock? It means that when we see a roadblock or experience or come across a roadblock, be it thoughts, be it feelings, be it something physical, it stops us in our tracks. It means we tend to either think, oh, I've got to turn back or we kind of give up or we feel stuck. OK. Lord, let me suggest to you, how about if you embrace doubt when it occurs whilst you're communicating with animals as a road sign instead of going oh I don't know if I'm doing this right I don't know is that the animal or is it me that's a roadblock because it stopped you in your tracks if you were to see it as a road sign you will go something like oh hang on a minute I don't know if that's me or the animal Okay, if this is a road sign, what would how would I how would I react to this? And you start to see that actually maybe the fact that you're wondering whether it's your pet or you is going to take you into another direction because that's what road signs do. They kind of give you a pointer about where you're going. It doesn't necessarily tell you exactly where you want to go or where you're going to get to. It just leads you to the next point. So how does that feel so far? Let me have a look in the chat box. Do you like the concept that you can change your doubt or start to view doubt as a road sign? So I'd love to see the word road sign in the chat box. If you agree that it's a useful thing to, to embrace, that doubt is going, now going to be a road sign rather than a roadblock. So Let's feel your energy around how does it feel.